This is a uh, interesting part that I'm making now um, in order to help me resolve an issue where um, I screw my assemblies together and when I do the plastic splits or cracks. I've had an orientation lesson, okay, so I have to change the orientation um, but I'm still having difficulty having to um, get the finished printed part out to the desired specifications for, for a, um, an assembly screw that I've chosen. I chose this screw because it was used in the 1950 version of this assembly, which I'm re-engineering. And I really wanted to use the vintage version of screw which is sort of an undescribed tapered self-threading device. But when I do the measurements and try to find something comparable, the closest thing I came to was a number 256 um, ANSI standard screw. The challenge was when you print to something like that, it never really comes out the same exact diameter as the specification that you call for. In this case, you can see the this uh, hole here in the middle. There is the screw size, and the number two prints that size. It prints much smaller. So I struggled with this. I have to drill them out with a pin drill, pin vise, and then I have to tap them with a the tap, then put them together. And it's I just can't afford that much time into this thing. These are self-tapping screws and so I want to be able to tell, tap the screws in. So what I came up with was a method of printing out a block that's going to take about 12 minutes. I can't tell you how much time I've spent <clears throat> over the last four years <coughs> with screws and screw sizes. And I'm not, you know, I'm kind of gone to school and everything. I mean, I should know better. So I've designed a test part and I'm putting in uh, the number two screw, which has a measured diameter at completion is a 1.78. I then went into a number three screw, uh, which is a 2.04, and a number four, which is 2.25. The number four should be, uh, computer went to sleep. The number four screw should be super big, but I'm not sure either of these two will work. He's too tight, he may not be working. So then I went over to the metric, oops, to the metric side, and I find that with the metrics, oh goodness, look at this, M2, M2.2, M2.3, 2.5, 2.6, all the way up to 3. I thought, wow, look at that. Interesting, though, the number 4 is a 2.2, but the 2.6 and, and the 3 jump. I, I don't have 2.6 and 3 in my directory as availability. Interesting. But at any rate, so I start with the M2, which is a 1.62, and I'm sure that's going to be too small. Then I drop down to the M2.2, which is a 1.775, which me should measure perfect. But as I know, this is a 1.78, and it's too small. So I'm expecting him to be too small. But then I can go up a tenth, which is 2.3, or I can go up three tenths, which is a 2.5, and I'm thinking the 207 which is slightly bigger than the three might be the answer, but if it's not, then I have this middle of the road, 2.175, which is actually larger than the OD of the screw. The OD of the screw, I have measured. Um, the outside diameter of the thread of the screw is 2.8, and the root is 1.8. 2.8 is the actual measurement of the screw, but this can't get in, and he's too big. Makes sense. 208. So what do I think I'm going to need? I'm thinking the 25, 25 or a 21, 2175 might come in tight enough for a self thread and not crack and not pull and actually create a good thread. So I'm kind of counting on this one here, the middle of the third row to be the winner, 2.6. I'm printing this block. It's going to take me 12 minutes. I'm so excited because um, in 12 minutes 
well, after calibration and warm up, um, I'll be able to test this out. I'll be putting my screw in all of those holes and see which one can self tap and hold and get a good, good thread lock on this part um, because I need to get going here. I have to build these things. These are for um, trains, model trains that smoke. Um, they have a hot box. That's that cavity there. It's filled with a material soaked in oil and then a heater coil sits on top. That's why it's called a hot box. Then there's a lid that directs the smoke here. You can see this is the inlet and that's the outlet and then the lid screws down. The lid is made from fiberglass because it, this thing gets up to a 200 degrees C and this plastic can't hold that resistor, that heater coil but the fiberglass can and since it's spaced and I, sometimes I have to line these with metal that helps keep the plastic going plus it's a good four mil or more thick it's very robust sides and um, these I've been using these for years they work they live okay so the challenge is screw together look at that six screw holes there and four five six screw holes there. There's twelve screw holes so if I have to drill and tap every screw hole oh my god so 12 minutes we'll know now we're getting ready to start this is my I don't know what you call it it's a good printer I guess I I've enjoyed using it and it's um it's got a tail on it right now you have to fuss with it in the beginning to get it clean and the nozzle off to the right track it's a, it's, maybe it's too close right now, but I'm gonna leave it, we're working. Here comes the block. See how small I made it. Maybe I made it too small, huh? Um, I only went up to uh, 2.0 layer height, because that's what I usually do. These might be so close together, it's not gonna work. I might have to enlarge it, but we'll see. 12 minutes later, I'll have that block and I'll be putting my screw in it and I'll see what works and doesn't work and if you want, I can let you know, but sometimes, you know, it's not sculpting and it's not art. I'm doing mechanical just because I want to, I need to. This is what I like to do. I like to build stuff that does things. This thing smokes. I build things that do other things like make lights and sounds and crazy stuff. So anyway, there it is. Thought I'd fill you in on a little trick I don't know maybe it's not a trick maybe I'm just dumb but there it is I'm doing it <laughs>